Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis video number 46. And in this video, we're going to continue talking about hypothesis testing, but using the T distribution and a one tail upper. Hey, uh, so far in Chapter 9, we've been doing hypothesis testing when sigma is known, and we've been using the Z distribution. Now we want to see what happens when sigma is not known, and we're going to use the T distribution. Here's our first example. Fuses are us, manufacturers fuses. A new machine for manufacturing fuses was installed. The old machine produced 250 fuses per hour. The manufacturer wants to determine if the new machine makes more than 250 fuses per hour. In essence, does the machine do better than the old one? Over the last month, a random sample of number of fuses made per hour. That's actually per, so we're, we're looking at an hourly rate. Was taken at the 0.01 level of significance. Can we conclude that the new machine produces more than 250 fuses per hour? Now, we have to consider for the T distribution whether or not we can actually use that distribution. Over here on the T histogram, here are our guidelines. We talked about some of this in earlier chapters. When are we allowed to use the T distribution? When the population distribution is normally distributed or near normal, or N is sufficiently large. So if the distribution is normal, then you can use sample sizes smaller than 30. If it's not normal, N greater than or equal to 30 should be used. If it's skewed, then N equals 50. Now, originally when the T distributions were created, it was based on the assumption that the population distribution was normally distributed. But over the years, research has been done to show as long as N is big enough, then the predictions you make from the T distribution tend to be pretty good. Now, you can run a histogram on your sample. It is absolutely not conclusive, but sometimes when you do not have data on the population, it may be the only clue that you have. Now, let's go over here. This is for fuses, right? And here's, where is our sample? Our sample's right here, and I actually ran a little histogram. It kind of looks like a normally distributed, and I don't see any outliers. Now, for this example here, fuses, the manufacturer has been doing this a long time, and they know that the distribution for this type of situation is normally distributed. So because this is a new machine, there's no data on what the population standard deviation is. The population standard deviation for the manufacturing situations like this tend to be normally distributed. All right, so we're going to use our T. Now, just as before, when we're setting up hypothesis testing, it's helpful to think about what the point of view is, what you're considering, and what the goal is. So the point of view here is clearly the manufacturer wants to see if the new machine is more productive. What are we considering? The population of number of fuses made per hour for this machine. And our goal, run hypothesis test to provide statistical evidence to determine whether the new machine makes more than 250 fuses. Now, just as we did in the last four videos, we got to look at this point of view to figure out how to set up the hypothesis. Now, we're interested in more than 250. So the old trick is just do a more symbol. Is that more symbol pointing this direction? You betcha. So that means it's a test on the upper tail. Not only that, but if you know this symbol, you can just slap it on the alternative hypothesis h sub a colon mu. Mu is what? Space greater than. We have 250. Now I'm going to come down here and step three. We list all of our variables and do our calculations. So the hypothesized mu will be 250. So I'm going to list that right here. Once you know the comparative operator here, you simply flip it, space less than, and add an equal sign. All right, so now we've set up our hypothesis, our alpha. That's our risk of making an error. What type of error? A type 1 error. Now let's go down and make some calculations. I'm going to scroll over just a bit here. So we have our hypothesized mean of 250. Sigma, we don't know it. It's not available. This is a new machine. We don't have any data on it. Our sample standard deviation, we'll use stdev.s. 
So we get 5.19. Statistic to use, we are going to use TY because we don't know sigma. Sample size, we're going to use the count function because we're counting how many numbers there are. For T, we have to calculate our degrees of freedom. N minus the number of samples we took. Degrees of freedom is used to determine which of the many T distributions you're going to use. The smaller the sample size, the more spread out and variation there is in the T distribution. We'll take our sample mean. All right, so we get 255.2. Alpha, our type of test, this is a one tail on the upper end, so that's on the right. Standard error, now we are gonna use S instead of sigma, so we say our S divided by square root of our N. Our test statistic, same as we've been doing for the Z distribution. We're going to take our sample mean minus our hypothesized mean and divide it by the standard error. All right, so now we have our test statistic. Now let's look at a picture here. I'm going to right click show this. There's our picture, right? We have a hurdle, alpha equals 0 0.01. Anything above the test statistic, if it's above here, we're going to reject the null and accept the alternative. Anything in this direction, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so we have our test statistic, and that's going to determine if it's on this side, fail to reject this side, reject. Now, we have two methods. So I'm going to scroll down here. We have the p-value and the critical value. So p-value will tell us the probability of getting that test statistic or greater. So we're going to use the t functions. Now, as always, even when we're using the z or the t, functions calculate from negative infinity up to whatever point. So if I'm interested in the probability on the upper end, I'm going to calculate probability from here up to our test statistic, wherever it is, and then subtract that from 1. So equals 1 minus t dot. And just as we've been doing with our norm dot s functions, the t functions, dist will throw in a t, and it will give us a probability. The inverse will throw in a probability, and it will give us a t. It says x, but what it wants is the test statistic, comma, degrees of freedom. I have my degrees of freedom right over here, so I'm going to click on that. Comma and the cumulative means, are we plotting a chart? No, we're not. That's fault. We're doing cumulative from negative infinity up to our test statistic, so we say 1. Wow. We've done three or four examples so far, and that is the smallest p-value we have uh, calculated. This is 0.00. .00 if we rounded it, it would be 001. That means one in a thousand times we could get a sample mean this small and make an error, right? So this is extremely strong evidence for us to reject the null hypothesis. Our rule, just as before, is p-value when it's less than or equal to the alpha. We reject the null and accept the alternative. Our critical value rule, just as there are, we used inverse functions before, we're going to use our t dot and then inverse. We have alpha of 0 0.01. We want the critical value on the upper end, so we have to say 1 minus. So in essence, we're putting 99% in here. And then comma, the degrees of freedom, tells us which amongst the many t distributions we're going to use to calculate this critical value. Right, so on the right we have a hurdle of 2.62. We clearly can see this is way past. So with both rules, uh, they'll come to the same conclusion. Let's look at our picture. Here's our picture, 3.87. And again, the most important thing here is this p-value is so small that uh, it provides extremely strong evidence that this new machine is faster. All right, so we did our calculating. Now, always important, we make our conclusion with the p-value. p-value is less than our alpha, so we reject the null and accept the alternative. This is very strong evidence. With the critical value, our t test statistic is bigger than our critical value, so we reject the null and accept the alternative. But we want to say a little bit more than that. Succinctly said, the statistical evidence, I should put 
very strongly suggest that the new machine is more productive than the old machine. At an alpha of 0.01, our sample mean of 255 fuses made per hour provides statistically significant evidence that the number of fuses made per hour is more than 250. And finally, we do have the chance of making an error. We do run a 1% risk of a type 1 error that we might say that the mean number of fuses is more than 250 when in fact it is not. However, the p-value provides very strong evidence that this machine is more productive. Okay, so that's our first example of T. When we come back, we'll have two more videos where we'll look at calculating T on the lower end and a two-tail T test. All right, see you next video.